The case of Port Lock, Alaska. Port Lock, Alaska, also known as Port Chatham, was a small town located on the coast of the Kenai Peninsula in Alaska. The history of this place is full of unusual occurrences that stimulate people's imagination and remain unexplained to this day. The history of Port Lock dates back to the 18th century when Russian fur traders came to the area to hunt fur animals. The place was named after Nathaniel Port Lock a British sailor who anchored here in 1786. Later, Port Lock became an important place for fishing and timber trade. In the late 19th century, Port Lock became an important port for trading fish and fur goods. Some of the first residents were Russian traders and fur hunters who settled in the area. Later, American settlers also came and settled as fishermen and miners. In the 1920s, Port Lock experienced a boom when gold was discovered nearby. This led to an increase in population and a higher demand for supplies and transportation. In 1927, a road was built from Seward to Port Lock to facilitate transportation. However, the popularity of Port Lock began to decline in the 1950s, as the trade in fur and fish declined and the gold reserves were exhausted. Many residents moved away to find work elsewhere and the settlement declined. To this day, legends and rumors persist that the abandonment of Port Lock was primarily due to missing residents of the town, unsolved murders, and sightings of Sasquatch in the forests and coastal areas around Port Lock. Over the years, people have disappeared without a trace in Port Lock, without ever finding an explanation. Estimates speak of well over 100 disappeared or deceased people under unexplained circumstances in the area of Port Lock since 1900. One of the darkest chapters in the history of Port Lock is the Port Chatham Massacre of 1932. The Port Chatham Massacre occurred on the night of June 27-28, 1932, in Port Chatham, Alaska. The small settlement, which is about 130 kilometers southwest of Anchorage on the Kenai Peninsula, was then inhabited by only a few people who mainly lived from fishing and logging. On this night, eight residents of Port Chatham were brutally murdered. The victims were seven men and one woman, all of whom belonged to the same family. Their bodies were later discovered by a fisherman who was fishing for salmon near the town. The exact circumstances of the massacre remain unclear to this day. There are no witnesses and no official investigations, as the place was so remote at that time that there was no police nearby. However, it is believed that it was a targeted attack on the family, as no other residents of the town were affected. There are several theories about who was responsible for the massacre. Some believe it was a revenge attack carried out by a rival fishing business or a former employee of the family. Others suspect it was an attack by poachers or Indians who were disturbed by the settlers' activities. Despite numerous investigations and speculations, the crime was never solved. To this day, the Port Chatham Massacre remains one of the biggest unsolved crimes in Alaska's history. There is no official confirmation that the abandonment of Port Lock, Alaska, was due to the presence of Sasquatch, also known as Bigfoot. However, it is known that there have been several reports of Sasquatch sightings in the area around Port Lock in the past. Some residents of Port Lock and the surrounding areas have claimed that Sasquatch has been spotted near the settlement and poses a threat to the population. There are also reports of Sasquatch hunting wild animals in the Port Lock area, posing a threat to the livelihoods of residents. This may have been another reason why some residents of Port Lock decided to leave and seek a new home elsewhere. The decline of timber and fish stocks, as well as the increasing isolation of the settlement, were likely the main factors contributing to its closure. However, the presence of Sasquatch may have contributed to some residents feeling unsafe and eventually leaving the area. There are reports of Sasquatch activity in the Port Lock, Alaska area, coming from both locals and tourists alike. Some of the reports of Sasquatch sightings in the Port Lock area date back to the 1920s when the settlement was founded. In the decades that followed, there were recurring reports of Sasquatch sightings in the region. However, there are some reasons why Sasquatch could be living in the Port Lock area. The region is remote and difficult to access, making it an ideal habitat for elusive and reclusive animals like Sasquatch. 
there is also abundant wildlife in the area that could serve as a food source. The indigenous people of the Portlock region, the Tlingit and Athabascans, have been telling stories for generations about a large, hairy creature that roams the forests and mountains. These stories resemble reports of Sasquatch or Bigfoot, as the creature is called in other parts of North America. The Tlingit called the creature Kushtaka, which means Land Otter Man, while the Athabascans refer to it as Nantina or Woodsman. Both groups believe that the creature is intelligent and spiritual and capable of understanding human language. Some indigenous people have claimed to have had actual encounters with the Kushtaka or Nantina. In some cases, physical evidence such as footprints and hair samples that allegedly come from the creature has been found. It is believed that the indigenous people of the region respect the Kushtaka and avoid it to not attract its attention or disturb its territory. It is also believed that the creature is a kind of patron saint for the region's wildlife and that it can bring disaster and misfortune if disturbed. Although there is no scientific evidence for the existence of Sasquatch, the presence of the Kushtaka or Nantina in the traditions of the indigenous people is a notable detail. The stories about the creature known as Kushtaka by the Tlingit and Nantina by the Athabascans are deeply rooted in the culture and history of the indigenous people of the Portlock region. It is believed that these beings have been living in the area for centuries, interacting with the people and animals of the region. There are many different versions of the legends about the Kushtaka or Nantina, but some common features seem to prevail. In many stories, the creature is described as large and hairy, with human-like features and often with red eyes. Some stories also tell of its smell, which is described as fishy or musty. The creature is believed to be intelligent and spiritual, and capable of understanding human language. Some stories tell of indigenous people who were able to speak with the Kushtaka or Nantina, and who learned from it and received help. In other stories, the creature is described as trickster-like, putting people in danger or playing pranks. Some indigenous people believe that the creature is a kind of protector of the region's wildlife, and that it can bring ill fortune if disturbed. For this reason, they respect the creature and avoid it. These stories are often passed down from generation to generation. There are several reports of specific cases associated with Sasquatch in the Portlock area. Some of these cases refer to encounters with Sasquatch that were perceived as aggressive or threatening, while other reports suggest that Sasquatch may be responsible for unexplained deaths in the area. On September 15, 1990, 51-year-old moose hunter Frank Graves disappeared near Portlock, Alaska. Graves had a hunting license and was an experienced hunter who knew the area well. He was alone on the hunt and had his equipment, including his rifle, with him. When he did not return, his family launched a search, but there was no trace of him. A week later, some locals found his remains near a river mouth. The body was stripped to his underwear and the entrails were ripped from the body. His equipment, including his rifle, was not found. The police launched an investigation and the search for the cause of death began. There were several theories, including the possibility that Graves was attacked by a bear or fell into the river and drowned. But there were also speculations that he was killed by a Sasquatch. Some locals believed that Sasquatch lives in the area and may be responsible for Graves' death. There were reportedly tracks of large bipedal hominids near the crime scene, and some locals claimed to have had Sasquatch sightings in the area. However, the police could not find hard evidence to support the Sasquatch theory and attributed the incident to a bear attack. It remains unclear what exactly happened to Frank Graves. However, there are many people in the region who believe that Sasquatch lives in the Portlock area and other parts of Alaska. The area is sparsely populated and inaccessible, making it difficult to find evidence for or against the existence of Sasquatch. On August 22, 1950, K.J. Barger disappeared near Portlock, Alaska. Barger was an experienced gold miner who had worked in the area before he disappeared. He was alone and had equipment for several days with him. When he did not return, his partner launched a search, but there was no trace of him. Later, some locals reported unusual noises in the area, which they described as screams or roars. 
It was also reported that Sasquatch sightings in the area had become more frequent. Two years later, a human skull and a portion of a thigh bone were found near Port Lock. The remains were identified as belonging to Barger, but the cause of death could not be determined. Some locals believe that Sasquatch lives in the area and may be responsible for Barga's death. There have been reports of large, bipedal hominids in the vicinity of the remains. The Disappearance of KJ Barger is one of several cases associated with Sasquatch in the Port Lock area. Although there is no hard evidence of the existence of Sasquatch, many locals continue to believe in the creature's existence and report sightings and unusual incidents in the area. There are other cases of missing people in the Port Lock area that remain unsolved and have been associated with Sasquatch. In 1969, a man named Jimmy Simpson disappeared near Port Lock. He was an experienced hunter and fisherman who had worked in the area before his disappearance. There was no evidence of foul play or animal attack, but some locals reported unusual noises and Sasquatch sightings in the area. In 1973, a man named Charles Bishop disappeared near Port Lock. He was also an experienced hunter and had gone elk hunting alone. After he failed to return, a search was launched, but no trace of him was found. Some locals reported Sasquatch sightings in the area. In 1980, a man named James Johnstone disappeared near Port Lock. He was an experienced bush pilot who had been scheduled to pick up a shipment from the area. When he failed to return, a search was launched, but no trace of him or his plane was found. Some locals reported unusual noises and Sasquatch sightings in the area. In 1972, a man named John O'Leary disappeared near Port Lock. He was an experienced hunter who had gone hunting alone in the area. When he failed to return, a search was launched, but no trace of him was found. Some locals reported Sasquatch sightings in the area. In 1985, a man named Michael Lemaitre disappeared near Port Lock. He was an experienced fisherman who had gone fishing alone. When he failed to return, a search was launched, but no trace of him was found. Some locals reported Sasquatch sightings in the area. In 2012, a man named Richard Manning disappeared near Port Lock. He was an experienced hiker who had gone on a solo hike in the area. When he failed to return, a search was launched, but no trace of him was found. However, there were reports of Sasquatch sightings in the area in the weeks leading up to his disappearance. In 1999, a man named Thomas Sabold disappeared near Port Lock. He was an experienced hiker who had gone on a solo hike. When he failed to return, a search was launched but no trace of him was found. However, there were reports of Sasquatch sightings in the area in the weeks leading up to his disappearance. In 2006, a man named Stephen Bears disappeared near Port Lock. He was an experienced hunter and had wanted to go hunting alone. When he didn't return, a search was launched, but there was no trace of him. Some locals reported Sasquatch sightings in the area. In 2018, a man named Robert Vance disappeared near Port Lock. He was an experienced fisherman and had wanted to go fishing alone. When he didn't return, a search was launched, but there was no trace of him. Some locals reported Sasquatch sightings in the area. It's important to note that there is no hard evidence to prove Sasquatch's involvement in these incidents, and other factors may have played a role in the disappearances. There are also indications that some of the reports of deaths in the Port Lock area may be due to wildlife or other natural causes. The region is known for its rugged conditions and dangerous wildlife, including bears and wolves that can attack humans. Nevertheless, these cases remain mysterious and raise questions about life in the Alaskan wilderness and the possible existence of Sasquatch. It is difficult to give an exact total number of missing or murdered people in the Port Lock region from 1900 to present day as there are many unsolved cases, and not all incidents were officially documented. At least five cases are documented in official police reports where people disappeared in the Port Lock region and were never found. Additionally, there are reports of several unsolved murders in the area where the perpetrators were never found. However, 
it's important to note that there may be many cases that were never reported or documented. Especially in the early years of settlement, the Port Lock region was very remote, and there were few people and resources to investigate cases of missing or murdered people. Overall, the Port Lock region is a very dangerous area due to its remoteness and the unpredictable nature of the wilderness, where people can easily get into trouble. It's important for visitors and residents of the region to exercise caution and take necessary precautions to stay safe. Based on the cases mentioned in this video, including the eight people killed in the Port Lock massacre in 1932, as well as several cases of missing people in the area that may be associated with Sasquatch, I could make a cautious estimate that there may have been up to 100 cases of missing or murdered people in the Port Lock region since 1900. However, it's important to note that this is only a rough estimate based on limited and possibly incomplete information, and the actual number of cases could be significantly higher. Please hit the like button if you have enjoyed this video on Sasquatch and Port Lock, Alaska, and subscribe to the Squatch Mafia channel at YouTube for more content on Bigfoot and Sasquatch. Thank you for watching.